Vaigur Jika Kalsa, Vaigur Jiki Fate. Uh so a little recap on uh, this segment um of the uh, the lives uh, that we do every week. So on Tuesday, um for the last I think twelve weeks, um we've been going through um the tenth var of Pai Gurdas Ji's Vara. So Pai Gurdas Ji is a Gurusik um who is related to the third, fourth uh, guru and and the fifth guru and onwards. Uh, so uh, they were the uh, the nephew of the third guru. They were um, the cousin of Bibi Paniji, who was the daughter of the third guru and married the the fourth guru, Guru Ram Das Ji. And then also that made them the the Mamma Ji of uh, Guru uh, Guru Arjan Dev Ji, the fifth guru. And when Guru Arjan Dev Ji um, compiled, brought all of the first five guru sahib's writings and all of the Bhagat's writings together um, into uh, what we first saw as Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Um, it was by Gurudashi that was the scribe who uh, who physically wrote down that Gurbani um, in in that uh, that surup, that original uh, form of uh, Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So Pai Gurudashi is a, a very very esteemed uh, person, a very esteemed figure in uh, in Sikhi, uh, to the point where uh, their writings were given a specific or well, special title by Guru Arjan Dev Ji, which was uh, that the, their writings would be known as Gurbani Ki Kunji. Uh, the key to understanding uh, Gurbani, the Guru's writings, the Guru's teachings. Um, and that's what they do. They uh, go through 40 uh, vara, 40 you could say like chapters. Um, and in each of those chapters there's like roughly you know 20 to 30, sometimes 40 uh, bodhiya. Um, in each of those bodhiya, or each of those uh, chapters, there's a specific theme. So sometimes it can be that, I think the one they've talked about, um, elements that I talked about in Guru Granth Sahib Ji, like you know, the different types of woods, metals, gold, silver. Uh, sometimes they talk, so one and one var is uh, uh, various different examples that are used in Guru Granth Sahib Ji to explain how we are all uh, loads of different forms, um, everyone that is uh, on this planet, or every uh, being that is in, in the universe, but really we're all one form um, in which they use, I think that's maybe the third or fourth var, um, which they use like various different examples, or explain various different uh, examples used in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So in this 10th uh, var, of uh, their writings, so there's 40 of them all together. Um, in this, we're on uh, we're on number 10, and uh, in the 10th chapter, they've been uh, listing and describing, uh, giving a bit of brief history of all of the figures, uh, all of the historical people that are mentioned in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So we've gone through. Um, we started with Bhagat Dhruv and Bhagat Prahlad Ji, who were uh, two very young. Uh, I think they're both princes. Uh, yeah, they're both princes uh, who uh, became connected to Vaiguru at a very, very young age. I think five and the, and the other um, was very young as well. Um, and uh, we've gone through um, other kings. So we've gone through, we've talked about Raja Janak. We've talked about uh, Raja Hari Chand. And in, uh, in that story, the uh, heroine was uh, his wife, the queen, uh, Dara Rani. Um, and how, she, um, how much uh, love she had for uh, the true... Uh, company of uh, of those who uh, collectively come together and uh, remember Vaiguru, focus on Vaiguru. We've had uh, Dro people that are related, uh, relevant to Krishna Pagwanji, uh, Dropati, um, Bhagat Sodama, Bhagat Bidar, um, and uh, recently we've been going through some uh, historical figures uh, and also Bhagats that have writings in Guru Granth Sahib. So we've had Bhagat Jaya Dev Ji, Bhagat Nam Dev Ji, Bhagat Tirulochan Ji who all are talked about in Guru Granth Sahib Ji, but also have their own writings in Guru Granth, Sah Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So one of those 15 Bhagats like Bhagat Kabir Ji, Sheikh Farid Ji, um, Bhagat uh, Ramanand Ji, Bhagat Surdas, Bhagat Berni, Bhagat San, Bhagat, uh, all of those, uh, Bhagat Ravadas Ji, all of those Bhagats, they're one of those 15. And this week we've got another Bhagat who's one of those 15 Bhagats. So they're talked about in Guru Granth Sahib Ji, but they also have their writings in uh, Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And this week it is Bhagat Tanna. Bhagat Tannaji. Um, and so a brief history of Bhagat Tannaji, they were around um, in the 1400s, so uh, you, just, just uh, before Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and a little bit overlapping when uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji were, uh, came into this world. Um, they were, their caste, which is which is important to the story, so their caste, they were a Jat, so they were um, a farmer, uh, which is, um, uh, I know in recent times, it's become a very fashionable uh, sort of caste. Um, I suppose the different castes they become fashionable and become um, uh, sort of uh, desired. But um, you know, originally it is one of those lower sort of working class 
uh, classes which weren't given much respect from the uh, high level you know kshatris or the brahmans um, of that time so the the point of it is that he wasn't respected very much because he was just a sort of farmer he was just somebody who who only knew about farming he didn't know how to read write or you know but actually as you'll hear that was um his his um uh, a key sort of factor to his success in connecting with Vaidru. Um Now, in this uh, Saki, in this story, uh, last week we talked about a Bhagat Tirlochenji. Now, that Bhagat Tirlochenji is a Bhagat who was around at the same time as Bhagat Namdevji, those who remember from last week. And he, that Bhagat Tirlochenji had a few Shabads in Guru Granth Sahibji. This week, there's going to be a Bhagat Tirlochenji mentioned, or a Tirlochen mentioned, but it's not the same uh, uh, Bhagat that has the writings in Guru Granth Sahibji. Uh, so that's one thing just to, to clear up. So uh, the story is the main story of Bhagatan Najin, how they became connected to Vaiguru, and in such a simple way, um, and we'll, we'll jump straight into it. Vaiguru Ji, Bhaman Puja Devate, Tanna Gau Charavan Ava. So Bhagatan Naji was Gau Charavan Ava. So he was uh, he was walking down a down a road, uh, sort of a uh, uh, um, uh, sort of. Uh, a rough sort of path pathway and um, to basically taking his cows uh, so they can go and uh, feed um, on, you know to his field so they could go and feed and um, on the way he uh, bumped into a Brahman who was called Tirlochan and this Brahman had made like a little mandir. those of you who have been to India um, know that uh, where um, statues of gods and goddesses are worshipped it's not always in a mandir in like a sort of uh, uh, an established like building Sometimes it's just in like a little hut that's made a little bricked hut and in within those, you know, there are like statues that are kept with a little roof over them and people go there and they sort of, uh, it's their space to to connect with their god or goddess. Um, and they bumped into a Brahman, he had made a space and he had many different uh, gods and goddesses in in, in like figurines, um, in, in a form of statues. And the aim of, you know, their, their aim is Brahmins or uh, those who worship statues in that way. It is like a physical representation of the god or goddess that they're they're trying to focus on and trying to um, uh, reveal, in a sense, or trying to sort of uh, manifest. So that's what he was doing. Um, Bhagatan Naji um, has has happened to walk past. Tanna ditta chalit eho. Bhagatan Naji ditta means to see chalit. Uh, these sort of happenings they saw. They saw what the Brahman was doing as they were walking by. Puchha Brahman. They asked the Brahman. Ark sunave. Ark means speak, sonave, and say and and uh, uh, tell me what it is that you're doing. Um, and he explained. He replies back. He says, "Thakur di seva kare." And I remember, Thakur is a word that we talked about last week and the week before, where uh, sometimes it's referred to as the statues, sometimes it's referred to referred to as um, uh, as you know, direct word for Vaiguru, so another word for Vaiguru. So they would use it as you know, I'm worshiping God, my Thakur. By the way we would use it, or more like more often it's used in Guru Granth Sahib, is um, we just use it directly for Vaiguru. Vaiguru is our Thakur, our master. Um, so it means Malak, it's another word for Malak, and it, uh, and it, um, it translates roughly to master. Uh, so he's doing uh, Thakur di Seva Kare. So I'm doing the Seva, I'm serving my uh, gods and goddesses via these statues. Jo Icha, so we fall power. Jo, whatever I Icha desire, whatever I think of in my mind and desire, so we that thing. I attain those fruits. Yeah, so whatever you could think of it as, whatever thoughts I plant in my mind, they grow. And um, with the power of my gods and goddesses, I receive the fruits of those uh, thoughts or those desires. Bhagatan Naji replies, Tanna karda jodadi. Jodadi is another word for uh, benati, which is uh, another word for ardas. Uh, so we all know sort of the word ardas. Ardas is when we sort of uh, formally ask Vaiguru for something we um, we sort of uh, sometimes in the Gurudwara Sahib we can use it in stand up and we do an Aradas to Guru, Guru Sahib to Guru Granth Sahib Ji uh, to fulfill a specific um, request of ours uh, so uh, Tanna he did a he, he, gave a, he performed a supplication he, he um, requested something from um, the uh, the Brahman may be me as well Dehe, give me one so that I can as well may uh, be Dehe ik Give me one so I can do puja too. If it pleases you, if it's okay with you, can I have a. Uh, remember, 
He's just a farmer. He doesn't know anything about scriptures. He doesn't know anything about uh, the history of the Devi, Dev, 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 you know, the gods and goddesses. He doesn't know. He's not like a, a scholar. He's not um, somebody who has gone to Kanshi um, or Varanasi, no, no, um, and has learned about uh, these things. He's just a simple farmer uh, who happens to heard or stumbled upon this uh, puja, this worship happening. And he asks, can I have a patr, can I have a stone so that, or a statue so that I can, uh, you know, get what I want. Or not get what I want, but so that I can um, uh, do the seva of uh, the, a statue so that then that statue can uh, support me and bless, it, bless me with its power. Um, or what uh, that Brahman did was, uh, he was a bit sort of, uh, not, not crafty, but he was a bit sort of, um, uh, you could say, egotistical or... Uh, he wasn't very uh, compliant. He just sort of got any rock off the ground, so he didn't. He didn't take like a specific shivling or a specific uh, murti, a specific statue. He just grabbed any rock off the floor. Patter ik. So he took one patter, one stone. Lepetkar. He wrapped it. De tanna. He gave it to tanna. No gal chudave. So that gal means your picture. So uh, Chadava means to let go, so that, so that Bhagatanna wouldn't keep chasing him again and again for this. So we, we say the Pichamira Shadas, and it means sort of uh, stop chasing me around, like Picham is your back, so stop chasing me around by my tail, sort of um, about, about whatever the, the gal is. In this case, the, the Patr. So that he would just leave him alone, he just gave him a rock off the ground and wrapped it up and gave him, here's your Thakur, here, this is, you know, you focus on this and you're going to, Vaigur will reveal themselves to you. Bhagatanna, you didn't know any better. Thakur no Nava Alaka. He took the butter home and he took that Thakur and he started to wash it. Nava Alaka. Chahe Roti. He got Lassi. Chahe means uh, Lassi. Uh, so, um, like a, uh, for those who don't know, it's like a milky milky sort of drink. Uh, roti. Roti mean, uh, uh, mean, mean Prashade Roti. La. Uh, so he made Roti, made uh, prepared Lassi. Uh, Pog Jadava. And he offered this food to. Um, to the Thakur. Remember, even though the two food, the two things he offered, he didn't offer sabji, he didn't offer a dal, because he was just a farmer. He just offered what simply he sort of knew in his mind that somebody would kind of want to eat. He didn't think, oh, this is a Thakur, this is a god goddess, what should I do? What's the right thing to do? He just did what was in his heart. He uh, he just took a roti, took some roti, and he took, with with love, he prepared the roti and the, and the lassi and just get offered that. So that's not, you know, nowadays, that would be, wouldn't be something you'd offer to Guru Granth Sahib. You'd try and offer the best thing you could. Uh, but Bhagatanna was just doing it out of the pure, a pure place of his heart. He wasn't trying to uh, impress anybody else, or uh, to try, he wasn't trying to compete with anybody either. Hath jord minnat kara. He uh, puts his hands together. Hath jord minnat. So minnat means uh, ardas again. It's another word for ardas. Minnat doesn't mean uh, mehnat. Mehnat with a with a haha in it. Mehnat means like when you um, means effort. Mehnat, so uh, when you work hard for something, mehnat karke. Uh, here, minnat, um, and in Guru Granth Sahib as well, minnat means to do an ardas, so there's a little bit of a difference there. Uh, so he does an ardas to the, to the statue that's in front of him, well, not even the statue, just the rock that he's got, that he thinks is a statue. Pairi, pair, pair. He, again and again, pairanch, uh, so if you think of that, the feet of the stone, you know, he's thinking it's the feet of my god or goddess. He matha takes, he bows down, and he touches the feet, and he put, puts his matha on the feet that of that stone again and again, understanding it to be uh, God, God's form. Bahut uh, manave, and again and again and again, he pleads with uh, what you know, what he understands to be his God or Goddess. Please reveal yourself, reveal yourself to me, so that I can have your vision. I can be blessed with your vision, with seeing Vaiguru in a physical form. Hopi um, moho na juthalasa. Ho means myself. Hopi me as well. Um, moho na juthalasa. I won't make my mouth juta. Juta means when uh, you know you sort of food is second hand or uh, it's been it's, it's impure. Sometimes it can mean, but in this case, it means to to make your mu juta means that you have like uh, you've eaten something and the food then is like juta essentially, so that you know you wouldn't then go and feed that to somebody else. So the word for that is juta. Juta is it's quite complex. It's not really a word that can be pinned down by one thing, but it basically means uh, something that is not. It doesn't mean that not clean. It means something that is like is impure now because it has been sort of marked with something from myself rather than somebody else. So um, making your mujuta means basically um, eating something. So I won't make my mujuta. I won't even put any food in within my mouth either. Tu rutta. And they say to their, their god or goddess, they say tu rutta. You are rutta means rusya. You are angry with me. 
So he thinks that the that the Vaidru is angry with him. That's why they're not revealing themselves through this rock that I just remember just being picked up and just you know um, um, given to him just to get him to leave him alone. Me keho na sukhave. Me myself keho. How can I sukhave? Keho means uh, or uh, there's nothing that will um, will bring me bliss anymore. So I don't want to eat. I don't want to drink. I don't want to go do this, do that. There's no way I can be happy when Vaiguru, you are uh, upset with myself or angry with myself. Remember, this is what he thinks. But he, but in his mind, in a pure place, he he genuinely thinks this. <clears throat> then what happens? Vaiguru becomes so um, uh, happy with his with his uh, simple approach to uh, bhagati, to meditation or to uh, devotion. Uh, they become happy with his um, with his what we call pola subha. Which is their very like, like you could say childlike, very simplistic, uh, free of ego, free of clever, free of uh, of you know you're using your intellect, um, just uh, devotion that is coming from a pure place. They become very happy with him. Go sai, so the sai, the uh, the the malak, the takud, the master of the go of the universe, the master of the universe that is Vaiguru. Go sai. They reveal themselves. They manifest in a form, um, and they reveal themselves in a physical form um, to Pakatannaji. Now, sometimes in some sakya, some versions of this, you hear that they had become so distraught that Vaiguru was not happy with themselves that they even took a shura, they took a knife, and they held it to their throat, and they were like, "Vaiguru, you know, you're not happy with me. Then what? What is the point of my existence? What is the point of me even being on this earth? And, and you know, um, uh, if there's, the, you're not, if you're not happy with myself." Then there's no bliss that I can attain in this world without your happiness. And so they, some some uh, uh, versions say that you know they they did that. They sort of um, not 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 threatened God, but essentially they were so uh, distraught that they uh, thought of taking their life. But um, in this case, they just said that you know they um, said they would not eat again if Vaiguru did not reveal themselves and eat that food, bless uh, that food um, by eating it. Uh, roti kahe. They ate the roti. Vaiguru came in a physical form. They ate the roti in front of Pagatanna. Chahe mohe lave. And the chahe, remember the uh, lassi? Mohe to their mouth, lave. They put the lassi to their mouth as in they drank the lassi. Um, and then they and then Bhagavad Dashi finished. They say, Pola pao uh, gobind milave. That they milave, they were met with, or they met, they uh, became one with gobind. Uh, so Gobind means is another word for Vaiguru. If you break it down, it means Go, which means the universe. Bind means uh, like a seed. So the the Vaiguru that is the uh, the one who has planted the seed that has uh, expanded into the uh, the universe that we see. So the creator of the universe. You know, they met with that Gobind, with that creator of the universe, Vaiguru, via how Pola Pau with a uh, Pola means um, a very innocent. That's the word. A very innocent, uh, pure-minded. Uh, free of you know any clevery, free of any sort of um, uh, any like use of their intellect to try and work out a strategy, a uh, way to reach Vaiguru, Just at the pureness of you know purity of their heart, the uh, innocence within them, and their pao um, and their pure love for Vaiguru is also pao. Um, when when you have the R sound in the middle, pao means um, love. So this in this innocent love, innocent devotion, you could say. And they they reached uh, they became one with Vaiguru. Um, so <clears throat> in uh, in Guru Granth Sahib Ji, this uh, Saki or this you know this is sort of the main uh, story we hear connected with Bhagatanna Ji. So Bhagatanna Ji have like uh, I think uh, three shabads in Guru Granth Sahib Ji, and they refer to like quite a lot. Um, so I'll go through some of those as well. Uh, so here Bhagat Kabir Ji in um, Rag Gauri, so on uh, Ang three two four in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Uh, they finish this uh, Shabbat basically where they talk about worshipping stones and rituals and doing things for the sake of it. Like we sort of talked about last week, you know, making these uh, deals with with God. Like, you know, if I do this, this and this, you'll give me this. So it's not really out of, out of love. Um, they they kind of say, you know, karam karat bade aham mev. That so many people are stuck in their ego. And because of that, the, the, the ego is the thing that fuels their uh Seva, the serving of their guru, or you know, the serving of God, or the doing of Simran, the completing of you know, uh, parts, it's just fueled through their sort of uh, their ego. Uh, these rituals, Milpatr ki karhi sev, which might mean you know, worshipping stones and statues, like um, in, in the case of that Brahman, 
ਭਗਤ ਕਬੀਰ ਜੀ ਸੈਸ ਕੋ ਕਬੀਰ ਭਗਤ ਕਰ ਪਾਇਆ ਮੈਨੀ ਅਟੇਨ ਵਾਇਗਰੂ ਪਾਇਆ ਦੇ ਅਟੇਨ ਵਾਇਗਰੂ ਭਗਤ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਦਾ ਡਿਵੋਸ਼ਨ ਭੋਲੇ ਪਾਏ ਮਿਲੇ ਰਗੁਰਾਇਆ ਐਂਡ ਇਨ ਅ ਸੋ ਰੈਫਰੈਂਸ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਭਗਤ ਤਨ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਸੇ ਭੋਲੇ ਪਾਏ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਥਰੂ ਥਿਸ ਇਨਸੈਂਟ ਪਿਓਰ ਡਿਵੋਸ਼ਨ ਮਿਲੇ ਰਗੁਰਾਇਆ ਦੇ ਮੀ ਵਾਇਗਰੂ ਨੇ ਥਿਸ ਸੋ ਰੈਫਰੈਂਸ ਆ ਭਗਤ ਤਨ ਜੀ ਕੇ ਆਲਸੋ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਸ਼ਬ ਆ ਥਿੰਕ ਵਾਇਗਰੂ ਅਰਜਨ ਦੇਵ ਜੀ ਆਫ ਆ ਫਾਈਂਡ ਇਟ yeah they said uh mere man my mind naam japat tarya by worshiping by reciting the name of vaiguru tarya we've crossed over this ocean that is the world to vaiguru on the other side uh, tanna jat so remember tanna was a farmer he jat balmik batwara they reference another bhagat i think we're going to mention in a few weeks gurmukh par paya and they refer to them as gurmukhs sometimes we ask ourselves oh can somebody become a gursik or gurmukh uh, if they're from a different uh, background let's let's use that word um and here they referring to pagat tanna ji as a, as a gurmukh that's a guru guru sahib guru gran sahib ji saying that uh, not, you know not myself not anybody else uh, so pagat tanna ji and then, and also pagat balmik ji who we will talk about in a few uh, few weeks i think um, they reached vai guru um and they were known uh, they were they are stamped as a gurmukh uh, that's otherwise their writings wouldn't be in guru gran sahib ji um if they if they weren't a complete saint um also uh, there's a so there's a famous shabad by pagat tanna ji that some might have heard so in aarti aarti is the uh, the shabad that is sang or a few shabads that are put together that are sang after uh, rehra sahib after the evening part um and in that shabad you might have heard a shabad gopal tera aarta where they basically um pagat tanna ji describe a physical and a non physical way of doing like aarti and that is done to uh, gods and goddesses so their version um and um that shabad is written by Tan- bhagat tanna ji so it starts with tanna as in the name tanna is saying gopal tera arata jo jan tumri bhagat karante ten ke kaaj swarta that whoever whoever does your bhagat whoever uh, completes your devotion vai guru your devotional worship your meditation upon yourself you complete their tasks and then they ask for a few things so there's a story behind that where um, um loads of saints come to their house and they haven't got anything in the house and they ask for so for like um the 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 power from vaiguru so that they can um, and 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 the um the foods they need um they ask for some clothes to give to the pagats they ask for all of these things so that they can do the seva properly um and then also um there's like a double meaning of this shabad and they actually ask for spiritual things as well as physical things to give to the pagats as well um so that's a, a very uh, uh, so it's got like a double uh, meaning of that shabad um also there's a shabad uh, sorry this shabad is by uh, guru arjan dev ji um they re- they talk about loads of different bhagats they talk about uh, bhagat ravidas ji they pa- talk about bhagat uh, san i think we're going to talk about them as well one of the 15 bhagats again um uh, and then at the end of the shabad they say eh bid sunaka jataro in the same way hearing about um, worshiping vai guru what can become of worshiping vai guru which he heard from the brahman ot bhakti laga he as well started his meditation as well he remember before that maybe he had or hadn't done a, some 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 sort of simran or some sort of puja worship or some sort of um penance uh but he ut he got up or he, you know he made his mind sort of stand up and make the effort that is uh, worshiping vai guru ut bhagati laga he connected himself to con- connected himself to the uh the, the devotional worship of vai guru mile pratak gosaiya uh, vai guru appeared in their full physical form tanna vad bhaga fo tanna bhagat uh, tanna ji vad means great bhaga fortune the one who had great fortunes um because why uh, you know he had such great spiritual wealth you could say spiritual bank account was so full uh, why guru you know uh, revealed themselves for, uh, to to him and there's also one other shabad uh there's one other shabad as well um i can't find so yeah but yeah, there's about three, there's three shabads um of bhagat tanajis um and what we can learn from this uh, sort of this week's uh, party is that bhagat tanaji uh, shows Uh, it's not always a case of you know oh if i do this many parts of this or if i do you know all these formulas we have and these methods we have and these um these sort of uh, tricks we think we have to reach vaiguru that that's not the currency that vaiguru works with yeah the what they work with like we talked about last week the one who doesn't do these deals with vaiguru you know they just do the seva of vaiguru and don't really expect anything back or you know it comes from a loving place not like a sort of oh guru sahib if i if i come every day in the morning uh to the gurudara sahib you know please help me pass my exams not that that's a bad thing you know where you shouldn't be going somewhere else you should be going to your guru 
Um, but remember, it comes from a loving place that, you know, Raihuru, you are the, you know, the creator of everything, the orchestrator of everything. Well, you know, who, who should I ask for from help, uh, ask for help from? It should be you know, yourself. So if it comes from like a pure place, just like Bhagavad Naji, um, then Raihuru becomes very happy with that. Um, it's not always a case of, you know, how much you do uh, compared to someone else or um, how much knowledge you have. Bhagavad Naji, remember, compared to that Brahman, what knowledge do they have? That Brahman's probably gone to a, uh, a university, a spiritual university of some sort. Um, he's, he knows all the scriptures uh, of, of, the, of those times, um, all the history that, um, that um, would, have, uh, uh, would have been relevant to, to a spiritual journey. But look at Bhagavad Naji, they got on, to, gone, got on the path uh, of uh, Bhagati um, and made efforts and from a pure place in their heart, they uh, they focused on focused on Vaiguru. That's that's a simple message from uh, from from this uh, body this week. So uh, we'll we'll leave it there for this week. Uh, next week, I'm not sure who uh, we're talking. Oh, Bhagat Birniji again, another Bhagat who has writings in Guru Granth Sahib Ji, um, and uh, is also referenced in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So we'll talk about Bhagat Birniji uh, next week. Um, Body number 14, so this week is 13, and uh, next week's 14. For anyone who has missed uh, the previous week's uh, recordings, you can go on the homepage of, or the, the Instagram homepage of uh, this uh, page, Mother Sahib God Educational Trust, and uh, under IGTV, you can um, you can see all the previous videos. I don't think all of them are on there. If you want all of them, then you can go on YouTube and you just type in the same thing, Mother Sahib God Educational Trust, uh, and in some of the playlists, all of the lives that go on in the week. And I've gone on for, you know, the previous couple of months. They're all on there and you can uh, catch up on those as well. Any questions, you feel free to uh, message this account um, or you can message my, myself as well. Bye, Guruji Ka Khalsa. Bye, Guruji Ki Fatah.